I built these crystal cell batteries that can power various loads such as charging a cell phone, running some lights, and powering a small motor. These crystal cell batteries can run for years without recharging. The crystal cells are made of magnesium rods and copper tubings. The copper conductor will be the positive and the magnesium rod will be the negative of the battery. Stay tuned to find out how to make your very own crystal cell batteries. I am using an inch and a half copper tubing for the casing of the battery. Also, I am using three quarter of an inch magnesium rods for the core of the battery. I am using these four ingredients for the makeup of the battery along with some vinegar and lemon juice. All the ingredients need to be grinded and mixed together thoroughly. For best results, all of the ingredients should be cooked and melted together. I 3D printed a solid spacer that will be used to evenly space apart the core from the casing. Also, I will use the elongated solid spacer to compact the ingredients into the cell. No one is really sure of the exact formula of what ingredients to use for the makeup of the crystal cell. I will leave a link in the description of videos I watched that explained in more detail about it. I compacted everything thoroughly, but I did not spend time melting the ingredients together. Finally, the first crystal cell is finished, I just need to make four more the same way. It looks like the first battery cell generates around 1.4 volts DC. The rest of the crystal cells are finished and it is time to put them all together. I also 3D printed some small spacers to hold everything together. All that's left to do is install the bottom support. All the cells are at a slightly different voltage potential. That's probably because the ingredients didn't get mixed 100% thoroughly. Although a single crystal cell can do some work, it makes a lot more of a difference if you connect a lot of these together. Either in parallel for more current, or in series for more voltage, or both. I connected all the cells in series to increase the voltage in order to power a load. It looks like the total voltage potential is at 6.68 volts. When these batteries are short circuited, the voltage drops but then quickly goes back up and tries to recover. The cells perform best at low current draw for a long period of time. The crystal cell batteries are finished and since they generate more than 6 volts DC, I should be able to charge a cell phone which requires only 5 volts and up. A correctly designed crystal cell should be at 1.5 volts DC when freshly made, but after a while, the cell would settle down at a lower voltage and remain there for a long time. I think the cell phone is charging at a slower rate than if it was plugged into a fast charger. I have a 1.5 volt DC motor which begins to run with a single cell, but definitely goes up in RPM as the cells are added up. I got a strand of LEDs that begin to light up at 3 volts DC, but definitely go up in brightness as the voltage increases. I left these lights connected to the cell for 6 days and the crystal cells were able to maintain their voltage potential steadily. In order to power loads that require higher current than what the crystal cells are capable of generating, I am going to build an array of two supercapacitors so they can be charged slowly. 
It took a few minutes to charge them to 5 volts DC. Now, in turn, they are able to charge a cell phone. A 12 volt incandescent light bulb pulls 0.28 amps at 5 volts DC. The crystal cell's potential is at 6.4 volts DC and rising after charging the supercapacitors for a while. The phone is pulling 0.22 amps from the supercapacitors. With the crystal cells and the supercapacitors connected together, now the phone is able to pull almost 1 amp of current, which is several times more than the supercapacitors could provide alone. A crystal cell can generate continuous electricity for years depending on the makeup of the cell. This particular cell here was built about 8 years ago. It does show some signs of oxidation and aging, but it is still able to generate almost 1 volt DC. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel as it helps support me make new videos just like this one.